Assalamualaikum and hi everyone My name is Ahmad Shawki bin Zadar Sheets So we are from group 2 are going to present about the finding and recommendation of high purchase agreement of CIMB Bank So the finding will be elaborated by me So regarding the finding is stated in the section 2 If high purchase agreement about group description includes any replacement or any renewal by the hire of any part during the period of the hiring so for description of the owner, a person who lets and help lets go to hire under the high purchase agreement, then about the session four act of HPA in a negotiation, the only will be the lead one. Or the hire will be act on his behalf on a written statement duly completed and signed by the owner. So and then moving on to the commencement and installment part in section four of HPA. This document must specify the debt, the one the hiring will be commenced and the specified the amount of each installment and stated who is the person and where is the place. So and then about the deposit which is included in section 31 of HPA, the customer needs to pay a deposit which value not less than one tenth of the cash price which is about 10%. So and then for example if the cash price of the item is about 10,000 ringgit Malaysia so hence the customer needs to pay about 1,000 ringgit Malaysia deposit so in section 6b or 6 and 6c of HP which is form about recommendation and the revision of payment using a variable as the term charge in HPA the only may revise the best lending rate at any time during the agreement period which already stated in section 6b for section 6c when owner already revised the base lending rate the higher can retain the existing number of installment and vary the number of installment or the, he can retain the existing number of installment and vary the amount of installment so for inclusion of incarnation and warranty is stated in section 7 of HPA the goods must have has the mechanical quality and warranty so if condition warranty did not justify the only must prove the higher has acknowledged and writing that the statement was brought to his notice and last but not least for session 9 so regarding the covenant by the higher in case of failure without the reasonable cause to comply then the refund continue the only should not be entitled to enforce the agreement against the hire, any right to recover the good from the hire, and any contract to guarantee relating to the agreement. So this is the finding I found based from the owner until continue to the deposit, also the warranty and the commitment, and also about the installment. So and then I'm going to pass to my partner. Assalamualaikum and hi, I'm Victor Madam Husna. My name is Nur Izzati Benteng Muhammad Suhimi and my mention number is B2011-01129. In this part, I will be clarifying the following nine sections as the continuity of the previous part that Shauki had stated. According to the higher, uh, according to the CIMB Bank Higher Purchase Agreement 0.7.1.7, in this part we could see that uh, we could say that it is aligned with Section 37 Clause 2B of the Higher Purchase Act 1967, which states that the hire is required to state in writing where the goods are, or if the goods are not in his possession, uh, to whom he delivered the goods, or the the circumstances are the, under this under which he lost possession of them. Moving on to the next part which is 0.7.2. In this part, we can see that the agreement is aligned with Section 4E and Section 4F of the Higher Purchase Act 1967. Section 4E states that uh, when the goods comprised in the higher purchase agreement is a motor vehicle, a hire, a hire may make a request in, re uh, in writing to an owner to keep the registration certificate on the motor vehicle. Meanwhile, Section 4F states that a higher purchase agreement shall not be entered into where the goods comprised in the higher purchase agreement is a motor vehicle, which has been altered or modified in its construction and structure. Next is point number 8.0, the insurance part. In this part of the agreement, we have identified that it is aligned with Section 26 of Higher Purchase Act 1967. Section 26 mentions all of all the information about insurance of goods comprised in Higher Purchase Agreements. 
Moving on to the next part, which is point 9.0, it mentioned the prohibition on dealings with goods. We can see that in this part uh, of the agreement, it acts in accordance with Section 17 of High Purchase Act 1967. In Section 17, it states that uh, when the, an owner has taken possession of any goods under Section 16, he shall not, without the written consent of the hire, sell or dispose of the goods or parts with possession thereof until uh, after the expiration of 21 days after the date of the service. Next is point number 10. The loss of and damage to goods part. In this part of the agreement, we can we have identified that it complies with Section 55A of the Higher Purchase Act 1967. Section 55A mentioned that any goods, documents, or computerized data seized in the exercise of any power conferred under this Act shall be liable to forfeiture. Continue to the next part, which is point number 11, which states the terms and conditions relating to late charges. We can see that in this part of the agreement, it acts accord uh, in accordance with Section 34C of the Higher Wages Act 1967. Next is point number 12, about the early completion by the hire. So, in this part of the agreement, we have identified that it complies with Section 14 of HPA. In Section 14, it mentioned that the hire under a higher purchase, higher purchase agreement may, if ha he has given notice in writing to the owner of his intention to do so or on or before the day specified for that purpose in the notice complete the purchase of the goods by paying or tendering to the owner the net balance due under the under the agreement. Moving on to the next part which is point number 13 which highlights the term of about termination by the hirer. In this part we can say that it is aligned with section 15 of HBA. In section 15 it states that the hirer of any goods comprised in a higher purchase agreement may terminate the agreement by returning the goods to the owner by uh, during ordinary business hour at the place at which the owner ordinarily carries on business or to the place specified for that purpose in the agreement. Next is point number 14 about determination by the owner. In this part of the agreement, we have identified that it complies with section 16 clause 1b of HPA. In section 16 clause 1b, it states that uh, when an owner has obtained an order of the court under subsection 1 clause 1a, uh, it, and he has served on the higher of a notice in writing in the form set out in the fourth schedule and the period fixed by the notice has expired which shall not be less than 21 days after the service of the notice the owner may exercise the power of taking possession of the goods referred to the subsection 1a um, for the following part i will pass the ball to my group member salma assalamualaikum everyone my name is no salma amira minti abdul Rasid. so the next finding is in the part of the option to purchase as it stated in the section 18 clause 4b of Higher Purchase Act 1967, owner should give higher an option to purchase the goods at the price which he intend to sell them. If the price is less than the owner estimate of the value of the goods, repossess if he intend to sell the goods by public option. In the part of set off in the Higher Purchase Agreement, CIMB Bank, it is not drafted according to the section 30 clause to be of higher purchase act 1967 where the higher may by written notice to the owner signed by the higher or the higher agents elect to the treat the agreement as a void or to have his liability reduced by the amount included in the agreement for term charge in other words the higher could choose to have his liability reduced by the amount included in the agreement for term charge his liability shall be reduced by the amount and that the hire should not be liable for any additional amounts. Furthermore, in the part of right to outsource a signed agreement, sell and visit in the higher purchase agreement CIMB bank, it specified in the section 18 clause 4, where the owner must give the hire an option to buy the goods at the price he intend to sell them. For if that the price less, then the owner estimate of the value of the repossessed good as stated in the notice or must serve or it cost to be served on the higher a copy of the notice of such public auction not less than 14 days before the date that the said auction is to be held. Moreover, in the part of service of notice in higher purchase agreements at MB Bank, it drafted according to Section 43, Clause A, where to undergo a valid agreement, the notice must be served on the hire by way of personal service or registered post to the last written address or by substitute service. Not only that, but the Section 43, Clause C also required the parties to communicate by mailing it by registered mail address to him at his last known place of habitation or business.
next in the agreement is stated that if there is a change in higher particular, the higher must give actual notice to the owner through channels permitted by the owner in order for such change of address to be effective and binding on the owner. This statement binding with section 37 clause 2b where the higher shall inform the owner in writing or state in the presence of the owner the new address where the goods are kept the date and circumstance in which the goods were lost or the date and circumstance in which the goods were removed or taken out of his possession. Other than that, the agreement also has the similar statement state in the section 4b where every higher purchase agreement shall be signed by or on behalf of all parties to the agreement. Not only that, but in the part of privacy clause in the agreement also related with the section 54, where it stated that if any person disclose any information obtained in the pursuance of this act to any other person, he shall be guilty of an offence unless the disclosure was met in the purpose of the performance of function under this act. The higher purchase agreement also make the schedule form as an integral part which automatically binds with the section 16 of higher purchase act where at this section the owner referred to the activity from 4th schedule and 5th schedule. Last but not least, according to the section 45, to undergo a valid agreement, the agreement must be signed or initiated by any person with a clear and legible handwriting. That's all from me. I'll pass the next presentation to Ayman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Ayman Hakimi bin Muhammad Zamri. I would like to talk about the recommendation based on the higher purchase agreement issued by CIMB Bank. Accordance with Section 4 of the Higher Purchase Act 1967, a Higher Purchase Act must include a specific date where the hiring started, the number of installment that was required to be paid under the hire agreement, and also specify the person to whom the payment is made and the time of the payment. Section 4C specifically clearly stated that the hire Higher Purchase Act must include a date on which hiring starts, the number of installments to be paid to the hirer and also the content of the agreement must also include a specific detail like date, address, time of payment and also insurance. Any agreement that did not comply with the requirement will be rendered void according to Section 4C Clause 2. A Higher Purchase Agreement for payment must also describe the price and payment for the item including a description of the item as required by the higher purchase act in section 4c clause 1 the higher purchase agreements must specify the number of installment to be paid by the tenant under the agreement and the timing of each installment payment it must also contain a description of the item that is sufficient for identification. If the, the payment used is cash or direct payment, the execute section 4C clause 1 must show the price as at which the lessee could have purchased the good at the time the contract was signed. According to section 4A of the Higher Purchase Act, an agreement must be in writing and it will be considered void if it was handwritten except for the signature or initial. It will also be considered void if the agreement was not clear and legible and have a very small font when being print, which is smaller than 10 point times. However, based on the higher purchase agreement that was issued by CIMB Bank, the font was 60 pixels or about 12 point times and can be considered past the mark of the minimum requirement which is 10 point font size. Without further ado, I would like to pass the next thing to my friend Shawani. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Siti Nur Shawani Betty Hamdan. Uh, I'm going to continue the recommendation and finding from uh, what Ayman has presented. 
in the CMB Hire Purchase Agreement, it is said for the 12 months of the hiring period, the owner will at the expense of the hire ensure the vehicle in the hire's name and a fully comprehensive policy to the full replacement value of the vehicle against fire, accident, theft and such other risks as the owner from uh, may from time to time require with a licensed insurance company. While well, for the remainder of the hiring period, immediately following the first 12 months, the hirer must at his own expense ensure the vehicle in the hirer's name under a fully comprehensive policy to the full replacement value of the vehicle against the risk as the owner may from time to time require with a licensed insurance company. However, in Section 26 Clause 2 of the Higher Purchase Act 1967, it is said where the goods comprised in a higher purchase agreement in is a motor vehicle, it shall be the duty of the hire to cause the said vehicle to be insured in respect of the second and all subsequent years that the motor vehicle remains under higher purchase. And in the Section 26 Clause 3, an owner shall not require a hire to insure any risk with any particular registered issue. Next, as it stated in the Higher Purchase Agreement, CMB Bank, if the hire fails to comply with any of the terms of this agreement and such default is continuing, the hire must, must acknowledge that the owner may apply any deposit, either in the hire's name or jointly with any other person or parties, regardless of the stated maturity. However, in Section 31, Clause 1A of Higher Purchase Act 1967, the owner must collect the deposit upon the signing of the higher purchase agreement. Not only that, but in Section 16, Class 1 of Higher Purchase Act 1967, also states that only if there had been two successive defaults of payment by the hire and the owner has served the hire a notice in writing, in the form set out of the first schedule and the period fixed by the notice has expired, we shall not be less than 21 days after the service of the notice and the payment of installments, amount also not more than 75% of the total cash price of the goods, the owner may have the power to repossess the goods from the hire. And also, uh, last but not least, in the hire purchase agreement of CIMB Bank, it mentioned that if the hire use or permit the vehicle to be used contrary to law or in any manner which may cause or result in the vehicle being seized or confiscated, the hire will no longer be in lawful possession of the vehicle with the owner's consent or cause or allow the owner's endorsements of, of ownership on the registration card or vehicle ownership certificate for the vehicle to be cancelled. However, it was not stated in the, in the agreement that if the owner is the one who violates Section 4E, Clause 1 of the Higher Purchase Act 1967, the owner will be guilty of an offence under this Act. It is important uh, recommendation to consider when constructing the Higher Purchase Agreement. So MB should not only state the repercussion if the hire breach the agreement but also emphasize the section when the owner breach the agreement. As a result, the signee will be well informed uh, the agreement and its condition. That's all for me. Thank you.